It takes a massive piece of intricate ironmongery to dig, in space, a radio telescope. Space is a place where astronomers expect only the unexpected. At the Mallard Radio Astronomy Observatory, they've discovered little green men. One of the team, Anthony Hewish, FRS, can claim to have spotted the LGMs, identifiable as kinks on a graph. They are heard in a complex maze of aerials spread over several acres near Cambridge. They're really called pulsars, stars that send out radio signals so regularly it was first thought by some that they came from intelligent beings. The man in charge of this gigantic look and listen operation uses the relatively simple apparatus of a bike to help him make crucial final adjustments to the movable dish aerial. Professor Sir Martin Ryle chooses the exact spot from which he will make his soundings. The three giant dish aerials, one can be moved along a railway track, become one big radio receiver, about a mile across when they're all scanning the same area of sky. The biggest telescope in the world. From various positions along the track, they've been on continuous oral patrol for four years, listening to radio waves emitted thousands of millions of years ago. They are in a world where distance and time mean nothing, and everything. Sir Martin has worked for 15 years on the controversial question of the origin of the universe. He says that the latest results suggest it began with a big bang and is still expanding. There seems no way of finding out what happened before the big bang. Machines dominate this science, and as ever, a computer digests the facts, absorbing them in the familiar stream of seemingly incomprehensible paper with holes in it. Most of us must be with the Romans when it comes to understanding sounds made by radio stars, neutron stars, quasars and pulsars too far away to be seen with ordinary telescopes. But with slide rules and compasses and the down-to-earth tools of the map maker, these interstellar mysteries can be charted, the heavens can be heard and mapped. But strange to say, it's the Romans who gave us names for these dim but awesome areas in space. We call them nebulae, and we name them after Roman goddesses. So Cassiopeia and Andromeda, Lepidoptera 